Now we're going to set up a community size uh, barrel drip irrigation kit and we're going to use a a barrel which is six times the size so it's of our bucket kit family size that we just used so we're going to be able to run six times as much pipe Okay, this is our 120 liter barrel. It is uh, six times the size of the family kit that we built earlier. So it will do six times as much pipe and it'll feed six times as many people. We drilled the same little hole carefully in this barrel as we did in the bucket. We've already got the grommet inserted. Here's the, the plastic part, same, we're, same stuff, same stuff, different barrel. Okay, but in, with this barrel, we're going to uh, insert this, this simple little valve. This is on and off because as you'll see later, when we fill this barrel, we want to make sure it has to be completely full before we open this valve. So these valves are real simple. You can get them anywhere. I mean anywhere. And so we're going to slide that in and then hook the rest of the system right up here. Okay. This is on. That's off. On. We've hooked a whole lot more pipe up to this, and to do that, we used more of these T's. So everywhere we want to row, we've inserted another T and another big length of pipe. You can see at the end here, you don't need an elbow because the pipe is flexible. We just bend it around the corner and get back onto our row. So that saves plastic parts, that saves money. Okay, I think it's, uh, it's time to show you how to, how to fill this up. Okay, we're, gonna, we're about to fill this. Um, we're we're going to fill it by hand, a bucket at a time. So the first thing we want to make sure is, is that our valve is closed. Remember, closed this way, open that way. We close that because we want to fill this bucket up completely before we open our valve because we're going to push water through lots and lots of pipes. Pour in. The filter, most important part. It's going to take a few trips. In the meantime, let me show you this. Once again, this is the emitter that we're using. This is there's another type though. It's in buried in my pocket here somewhere. This is what we call a flag emitter. 
If you can get these, this is called a button emitter. We poke a hole with a nail, just like with the flag, and then pop this in like it's a thumbtack. And it has a tiny, tiny slit in it that allows a drop of water out at a time. It's not, it doesn't let water out as quickly as this. That's okay. The important part is these cost about two cents a piece. These cost about 12. If you can get button emitters, um, they'll save you some money. Unfortunately, if you push a button emitter in too far, it won't let water out, so you have to pull it back out of the pipe a little bit. In order to clean the button emitter, you just spin it. And that'll usually kick out whatever's blocking this slit. If that doesn't work, pull it out all together, blow it off, push it back in. The important part is that it's two cents, and it does work. Um, and we found a place in South Africa that manufactures these. These come from the United States. These are both called non-pressure compensating emitters. That's why they're cheap. Pressure compensating emitters have a little diaphragm in them, and they're like uh, four or five times the cost of this. Uh, plus, you can't pull them apart and clean them. The ability to clean when we get when they get plugged up is what makes this system uh, work as well as it does. The village garden is definitely meant for a village participation. The bucket itself has to be low enough so that the women can come and pour the gray water in. Now the gray water itself can be what they have after they do their evening meal when they've rinsed their vegetables and their fruits. Feel free that each person can come. They can dump it into the bucket. It will hold it. You have That's one of the reasons that we use it with the spigot on it because we can shut it off. We don't have to worry about all the water disappearing. So the village can participate together in keeping the village garden going. We filled our barrel. We've got some clean water, some recycled water that we caught off a roof. Uh, it's full now, so the valve is closed. We want to send it into the pipes. There it goes. You can see it's coming out here already. And where once we were feeding just four people vegetables with a family size kit, now we can feed 24. We're demonstrating one of our rows with a different kind of pipe uh, than you saw earlier. Earlier you saw the solid black pipe that we poked our hole in and put our emitter in. Uh, this brownish pipe has the emitters built into it already. You can see that it's slightly swollen in here and the water's dripping out of this hole. Okay. Um, you're probably going to come across that. Uh, this, this type of material could be donated by an NGO uh, for use in your garden. When you use recycled and gray water, uh, these uh, have a tendency to stop dripping. And when they do, they're pretty much uh, useless beyond that. 
I've seen people, you can try and take a nail and clean the thing out, but because this, it doesn't work that way. If you puncture this pipe, you're going to get a geyser. So here's what we want you to do. If you're blessed with this kind of pipe and you're going to use it, slowly you will see that things um, st start to malfunction. When that happens, don't try to fix this. We'll do, the, do our best to get you in touch with some of an, an ex, what we call an external emitter because it's on the outside of the pipe. And when this plugs up, pretend that's plugged up, we're going to go down to, to a smooth part of the pipe, as close to this as we can, and we're going to poke a hole in it. I'll show you that geyser we were talking about. Okay, That's obviously no good for watering because that water, is, first of all, is not going to hit a plant and it's going to run away. But now we're going to take one of our emitters, external emitters, and we're going to pop that in there. And now this emitter that once did not work is working again.